So here's a quick review of the Weller ES120 PCB stand. So you can see the box there. I got it from DigiKey. Um, this is what it looks like in practice. So there's some metal rails. And you just slide these two other devices along it that hold your PCB. There's knobs there that you can loosen for the rails. They don't do a whole lot. Most of the sort of holding power comes from rubber feet on the bottom. So when you put it down on the table, it's pretty stationary. So as an example, if you have a PCB, you just adjust the size roughly to what you need, shove it in, um, and put both of them just like that. It takes a bit of fiddling with to get it to fit just right. Um, and then by pushing them together, you can sort of increase the amount of tension on it. So the default mode moves in increments of 15 degrees. If you push it together a little closer like that, what you have is they call it infinite freedom, but you can just spin it without it locking in place. Um, doesn't really matter. Both are useful for whatever you do. So if it's too loose, it may fall out when you sort of go to try to turn it. So you've got to make sure it's not too hard. As an example of using it, you can just put a little integrated circuit on there and then move the arm to hold it down. When you rotate it around to the other side for soldering, it keeps it nicely in. Um, so if you're using it on smaller circuit boards, you may find that the depth of those holders is a little too much. Um, so if you have something like the Raspberry Pi, which has stuff right to the edges, and you will have a fair amount of circuit boards that end up like this, then it won't fit in those default holders. Uh, the way they get around that is that if you flip it on its edges, there's little notches there, and those little notches can fit in it. So there I'm showing sort of the end view that it used to be used and the little notches. So those hold it a little less securely perhaps, but still pretty well, and it seems to, seems to work well enough. Um, I should note the material that those are made out of is plastic and it doesn't seem to be that heat resistant. You can melt it with a soldering iron. I haven't tried um, too highly to melt it with hot air, but so there we can see a small circuit board held in and it's still quite secure. If you're using it in this method and want to push parts into it, basically you can just flip the arm to the other side like that and when you put the circuit board in, you can still use the arm to push parts in while you flip it around and solder. So to give you a better idea of using it, here's a sped up video of me making a prototype board I was working on. Um, so it works well enough. You can drill for adjusting the size of holes or for doing stuff like strain relief, which is sort of nice. That's always a bit of a hassle if you're having to not drill into things. Um, and the multiple angles is also handy when I was going through it to help you get the best um, get the best angle for soldering different parts on. So really the only downside is that the plastic isn't super heat resistant so I don't know if you'd want to use it for doing hot air work with surface mount parts. As well because it's so high if you're using surface mount parts and you knock one off uh, it may fall and bounce way further than if you just had the PCB on a you know small plate or something like that. Altogether, though, it's still well worth the price, I think. Uh, it does make holding a lot better. It is anti-static, so you can ground those rails and not worry so much about static if you're in such an environment. And it is quite a useful device. So there's not too much more to say. It's more the time lapse now of the circuit board. If you're interested, as I say, I got it at DigiKey. I think most other suppliers seem to sell this. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this useful.